Thanks to the supporters of channel member Ken Davenport. Well, now we've carefully constructed a perfect squad of 25 players for both Premier League and Europe. Guess it's time you got to see him in action, isn't it? Hello and welcome to part 12 of my FM24 Beta Save with Brighton. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are going to play a couple of Premier League football games so you can get an idea of how our new look team plays. Since you were last with me, uh, well, we haven't played any more matches, but obviously we did play a few during that transfer special yesterday. And aside from losing on the first day of the season to Everton, it has been a jolly good start to the season. Lovely, strong performances, drawing away against Man City, particularly good, thrashing Brentford. Brentford 6-0, really nice. Lovely to see a good team cohesion already. Put a very good club atmosphere. No unhappy players. What a difference being able to register everybody in our European squad makes. We've got a squad of 25 players. One of them's not in the European squad. That's Endrick. Um, but we knew that when we signed him. That was kind of deliberate. That's why we wanted to bring in a loan because he wouldn't get upset about not being in the squad for the Conference League. But things are going well. Tammy Abraham has come in and is scoring goals for fun. Hopefully you're going to see a little bit more of that today. And we find ourselves eighth in the Premier League but we have a game in hand on all of those teams above us. So if we can go and beat Sheffield United, that will put us back up to fifth place and starting to look like we might be in contention for a Champions League spot, which is all we've ever wanted, really. Can't help but notice Bournemouth have won five from five. What on earth is going on there? Wayne Rooney's Bournemouth have won five from five. I don't, I'm not saying for sure that Wayne Rooney is overpowered in FM24 as a manager. But he was at Bright at Birmingham for half a season and got them promoted to the Premier League. Frank Lampard then doing what he does best and has lost five from five. Uh, but he's now got Bournemouth top of the Premier League with a 100% record. It's not as if he's even signed a load of players. It's pretty much the Bournemouth team as is. He's got Ronnie Edwards from Peterborough in there. Not using him either. What a wally. What a plum. Uh, but, I mean, that's... Uh, that's a Bournemouth team that shouldn't have won five from five. That's for sure. Shows what we could be doing if we put our minds to it. This is the team we're going to put out there for the game against Sheffield United. We've got Lucas Perry in goal. A back four of a Stupinian, Dunk, Scherz and Walker-Peters. Berg and Pizarro in midfield. Fatty, Smithrow and Bailey. Then behind Tammy Abraham up front. Evan Ferguson is now training again after his injury that kept him out most of pre-season. But isn't quite fully fit. So Tammy Abraham, scoring for fun, can stay in the team for now. Leal Abada, who has had a brilliant start as well, has also picked up a knock. So he doesn't, he doesn't play. And also... So Enciso is uh, currently injured as well. What I am going to do, though, is put Endrick on the bench because, although to be fair, now we've got Evan Ferguson back, we don't really need Endrick anymore. Let's just pretend Endrick doesn't exist. He's not ready to be a regular starter for us. My assistant manager really wants to push Endrick, uh, push Evan Ferguson straight back into the team, which seems odd on two fronts. One, odd to risk him against Sheffield United when we should be able to win without him and he's not fully fit, but also odd because Tammy Abraham scored at more than a goal a game since arriving. Seems a little bit a little bit over the top, just push him straight out of the team immediately. I know Evan Ferguson is good, uh, but he's, Tammy's already got nearly as many goals this season as Ferguson got last season. I know we need to give Ferguson game time if he's going to fulfil his potential as a wonder kid, but I also am very aware I want to keep winning football matches, scoring goals, and hopefully qualifying for the Champions League. So if Tammy's the man to fire us to that, Ferguson's just going to have to force his way back in the team. He's not going to get any favours to get him back in when Tammy Abraham is playing as well as he is. Berg with the in-swinger and talking of Tammy Abraham, there he is at the near posts on the corners. It's not actually where the majority of his goals have come from. I think that might be the first time he's scored from a corner, but he's, what, 6'4"? Six, six, I'm pretty sure Tammy's a big boy. So he is going to be a threat from those kind of situations. How tall are you, Tammy? You are... He's 6'5". He is a big one, isn't he? Goodness me. So if we look at our set pieces, presumably when we are whipping it into that near post... Yeah, Tammy Abraham is the man that we're aiming for. Scherz and Abraham are the two that we're aiming at. And uh, 
Tammy doing the business there for us with the first highlight of the game. We can come off of this now. We don't need to fiddle with it too much. Here we go with another one. If he, do, if he does it again, corner hacks are back, everybody. This time we go to the far post where we're aiming for Scherz again and it falls to Smith Row. And he has finally started scoring a couple of goals for us. He, he was here for half of last season and never got a goal. He was great at everything else, but needed to add goals to his game. He's already got a couple this year and I thought he was going to score an absolute screamer there. But unfortunately, if anything connected with it too well and it went flying over the crossbar uh, Cameron Archer is one we need to keep an eye on because we know he is good for goals we've had him in many previous versions of FM when he wasn't as good as he is now and he's always been a decent lower league signing previously but now at Premier League level having his big move to Sheffield United uh, we probably need to be uh, aware that he exists Ollie McBurney is another. I mean, that's basically a strike partnership that could have been in non to Legend on like FM 19. It's uh, it's certainly two players I have used in the past in lower league saves who've now made their way to the Premier League. How very exciting. Um, but it remains 1 0 as we head towards half time. It's actually, uh, after a strong start, a little bit of an anticlimactic first half, really. You would expect us to. To be a little better than that, and in fact, Estupinian's picked up an injury, so we're going to take him off in a second. But if Scherz hits this the way we know he can hit them, we're about to see something special. He's already done one of these this year. Oh, he rolls it into Pizarro! We see something special anyway! Vicente Pizarro! Scherz tricked us all. I mean, it probably was a little bit too far out for him, but we have seen him score from that sort of position. I imagine that's what Sheffield United are thinking about. He lays it into Pizarro, who's unmarked, and just sticks it into the top corner from the edge of the area. Lovely stuff from him. Have we got our new left back on the bench? We haven't. Uh, so we're going to have to put Baselli in there, which isn't ideal because he is a right-footed centre-back primarily. Um, I, guess, I mean, we could... We could do we could do inverted fullbacks here. Walker Peters can't really. What I might do is have Baselli as an inverted fullback and then have Lewis Dunk as a libero. And rather than having Baselli push forward, we'll have Dunk go forward. We've done that. We did that in a couple of the European games when we when Estupinian and Walker Peters were both unavailable. We had Baselli and Scherz as our two fullbacks, had them as inverted fullbacks, and had Dunk as the libero, and it worked quite well. So we have got a little bit of flexibility in that back four to do things like that if we need to. I certainly think it makes a lot more sense than trying to get Baselli flying up the left-hand side as a wing-back. Tammy Abraham's in again. Tammy Abraham scores again. He might be offside this time. Um, Ansu Fati pokes it through to him, but um, he may have just strayed off. We have had it disallowed, yeah. Um, it looked like, I mean, he was in too much space for him to have been offside. It's good work from Berg, though. Fatty's got the right idea, but Abraham doesn't quite time his run right. It's almost as if Abraham set off on his run, expecting the original ball from Berg to be over the top for him and playing it through Fatty on the way through. Although it ended up being a better pass, um, it led to Tammy mistiming what he was trying to do. Sheffield United trying to get themselves back into the game here through a set piece. It's ended up back with their defenders and Ansu Fati is there to just take it off him and hopefully not do anything stupid. I mean, he's very, it's very calm. That's your, that's your Barcelona youth player there. Just absolute calmness personified, never in any fear of losing the ball. And he set up a counter-attack of her own. It's with Berg and now to Walker Peters, who plays it out to Bailey, who's been a little bit quiet in this match. It's the first time I've mentioned him today. Um, an opportunity for him to to show why he should still be in the team. Since the new boy um, has come in on that right-hand side, whose name escapes me, Abada. Um, Bailey hasn't really had the chance to start and he's not played particularly well today either. So um, maybe we're seeing the end times for Leon Bailey. It's a little bit early to be declaring that, to be fair. Right, we are going to make a couple of changes. We're going to stick Ansu Fati onto the left. Pedro is going to come on on the right. Sorry, we're going to stick Smith Rowe onto the left and then we're going to bring Sunset on in there. So we go Smith Rowe, Sunset, João Pedro. Sunset has had a good start to the season. One of the things about playing as many games as we have already because we've had two games a week since early August. With the, we've had six qualifiers for the Conference League. So we've been rotating massively and we've been trying all of these boys out. And Sunset has had probably four or five starts already and looking pretty good in that attacking midfield position. Smith throw 
doesn't seem to have an issue of being pushed out onto either wing. So it's just another option for us, which is always jolly nice to have. Schurz then plays it forward to Pizarro. And now Sunset plays it into Jao Pedro. It's lovely work from Sunset and it's a lovely finish from Jao Pedro. That's why he still gets to be on the bench ahead of Endrick because the couple of times we've seen Endrick, he doesn't really... Doesn't really look like a huge threat just yet. We might have got him a year or two too early. Obviously, in a year or two's time, we'd have no chance of getting him. So we took a gamble. It might not have paid off. It's a gamble that's not really cost us anything. But João Pedro showed a bit of faith in him this summer, keeping him when we moved on the likes of Almada and Pedro. And hopefully he'll repay that this year and start scoring a few more goals like that when he gets his opportunities. Right, we're going to bring on Andre. We're going to bring on Vermeeren. And we've got such strength in depth in all positions now. It is night and day from where we were this time last year. I know the real-life Brighton fans will be a little upset that the uh, the squad is so different from... I acknowledge one of the reasons I wanted to do Brighton is it was it's a very strong-looking squad in real life. It just doesn't fit how I want to play. We've now got a 25-man squad where we've got 25 players who all play the way I want them to play. They fit in the positions I want to use. And because of that, We've got such versatility. We've got such strength in depth. I'm feeling good about this season and we've looked very good today. A comfortable 3-0 away win here. We uh, we may well be qualifying for the Champions League and what a contrast from where we were this time last year. Smith Rowe on that left-hand side. That's his third goal of the season. What I probably should have done, just seeing Tammy with a flick on there, probably should have brought Evan Ferguson on with 20 minutes to go just to get some game time into him. Uh, but... We had tired legs around him, so I guess we, uh, I guess we took off who actually needed to come off. That's good work from Tammy Abraham. A good finish from Smith Rowe. We are now getting the best out of him this year as well. Now he's here as a permanent player. Four 0 away from home to go with the six 0 at home that we beat Brentford by in the last match means in our last two Premier League matches we have scored ten, conceded none. We are looking good, boys and girls. Who do we play next? Can we keep this run going? Crystal Palace. I wasn't expecting them to crack like that. I hope that came from the microphone. That was very cool. Folks, I just want to take a moment to thank today's episode sponsor, Manscaped.com, the premium brand for men's grooming and hygiene products across the globe. Manscaped is trusted by more than 9 million men worldwide for their trimmers, hygiene, and shower formulations. And of course, their super comfy premium boxes. And now they're changing the grooming game again with a brand new product. Say hello to the Handyman Compact Face Shaver. Now, you know I'm all about finding the best products that make our grooming routines easier and more effective. And let me tell you, the Handyman does exactly that. First things first, the Handyman delivers a quick, close shave with a unique dual blade system. It features a standard foil shaver as well as a long hair leveler blade to knock down up to three days worth of growth. Say goodbye to patchy, wobbly beard edges and hello to a clean, well-groomed appearance. Another great feature is the skin safe technology designed to help reduce nicks and cuts. Plus, the Handyman is waterproof, which makes cleanup quick and easy. Look at this sleek and compact design. It fits perfectly in the palm of your hand, making it super easy to maneuver and reach those tricky areas. Whether you're at home or on the go, the Handyman is your ideal grooming companion. And guess what? It's even airplane friendly. With its compact size and rechargeable battery, you can take the Handyman with you wherever you go. No more compromising on your grooming routine whilst traveling. And speaking of battery, the Handyman boasts up to 60 minutes of runtime on a single charge. That means you'll have more than enough time for multiple shaves without worrying about running out of power. When the battery level gets low, the battery level indicator will blink, letting you know it's time to recharge. So whether you're a busy professional, a frequent traveler, or someone who just wants a convenient and effective grooming tool, the Handyman Compact Face Shaver is an absolute game changer. And here's the best part. I've got a special offer just for my viewers. Use code LELUJO at checkout and get 20% off your purchase of the Handyman from Manscaped. So what are you waiting for? Upgrade your grooming routine and get your hands on the Handyman. Trust me, your face will thank you. Does that mean I don't get to mention my balls at all in this one? 
So the big, it's not a derby, the rivalry game against Crystal Palace. Estupinian's not fully fit after picking up that knock in the last game, but um, he's 100% fitness. So we're going to play him. We've got Valley on the bench to come on if need be. Um, other than that, the only other change is the return of Abada on that right-hand side. Leon Bailey didn't do anything to suggest he needs to stay in the team. Um, Evan Ferguson is now fully fit, but Tammy Abraham now has 10 goals already this season. He's averaging an 8.06. We can't be dropping this guy at the moment. Evan Ferguson is going to have to force his way back in. Tam Tammy came in to be the competition to Evan Ferguson. Ferguson gets injured. If Tammy keeps on like this, what am I supposed to do? I know we're supposed to be developing Evan Ferguson. I know he's a wonder kid. I know he goes on to become a wonderful player if you develop him properly. But at the same time, I'm also managing a football... I'm, I'm managing the football team. I'm not here for Evan Ferguson's career development. And to be honest, if we didn't play him all season long, Spurs will still give me 70 million next summer. So it's not even a big deal. I'd like to... Use, I'd love it if they both came good. But at the moment, we go with Tammy. And we might have to bring Ferguson on in a panic because we're 1-0 down here against Crystal Palace. And no matter how good our recent form has been, um, if we if we lose at home to Crystal Palace, the fans are going to be a little bit grumpy about it. So we uh, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. And we've given ourselves a little bit of a uh, an uphill battle for the, uh, for the rest of the match by going behind early on as we have. We're going to offer some encouragement. I'm not going to demand more just yet, but... We might have to soon. Schurz with the free kick. Lumps it forward. Looking for Ansu Fati, who actually flicks it onto Estupinian. He does quite well there, Ansu Fati. And receives the ball back from Estupinian. And he's through on goal. Ansu Fati, what a goal. I mean, I can't even remember how much we paid for that man. But he is worth every penny of it. He flicks it on himself. Plays the 1-2 effectively with Estupinian. But that finish was absolutely sublime wonderful stuff from Ansu Fati. It's 1-1. One, one. Palace don't have players like that. Oh, we've got, lo we've got loads of them. We've got like three or four who can do things like that. That was brilliant from Ansu Fati. Um, and now Scherz plays it to Pizarro, who's established himself as the starter in this playmaker role since Gross has moved on. A Stupinian now with the cross. Tammy Abraham's there, but he can't keep his header down. It remains 1-1. One, one. But yeah, Pizarro wouldn't, wasn't necessarily the man I expected to establish himself in that role. We had Andre, we signed Vermeer in, uh, but Pizarro got the early opportunity with, um, I think both Andre and Vermeer were on international duty for our first Europa Conference League game. So Pizarro came in and has never really given up the spot because he's been very, very good in it. So uh, again, there's competition for places. We've got a long season. It's not a massive squad. There's going to be rotation. People don't need to worry just yet about who's playing where. Once we get into the Conference League and we're back playing two games a week again, there's going to be plenty of rotation in all of these positions. So everyone is going to get their opportunities I, I hope it's coming across how excited I am at the prospect of this season. That being said, we are going to go attacking and offer some more encouragement because we need to be beating Palace. We're, we're a team that have aspirations of the Champions League. We can't be drawing against Palace, rivalry or not. They've created almost nothing. We need to we need to go make things happen. Estupinian hasn't been able to make it through the full game. Valley can come on for him. Tammy Abraham, there you go. This is the opportunity for Evan Ferguson. Tammy's not had a good game. Ferguson can come on. Abada's also not had the best of time. So Leon Bailey can come on, who of course started in the previous match. Abada also on his way back from an injury, but all eyes now on Evan Ferguson. In fact, it's Tammy Abraham still on the pitch. I thought he'd looped that over Henderson. I thought I was going to have to change everything there with Tammy winning another another headed goal. But we are now going to demand more because I think we definitely should be expecting to win home games against this calibre of opposition at this point. And it is a corner, an in-swinger from Berg. Looks like we're loading up that near post. Scherz is there. Ferguson's there. Ferguson actually wins the header, but he's facing away from goal. And Sufati with his probably his final touch because I just got the notification that he needs to go off with an injury. If this is what he can do when he's injured, goodness me, imagine what he's going to be like fully fit when he's 26. That's brilliant again from Ansu Fati. He is too good to be playing for Brighton. It is ridiculous. Just picks the ball up on the edge of the area. It should not be scoring from there. Henderson shouldn't be beaten at the near post from there, that's for sure. Um, but lovely stuff from Fatty. We are going to take him off now. Jao Pedro is going to come on on the left. Um, and we are also going to 
take off Pizarro. Vermeeren's going to come on in that role. Pizarro on a yellow card. No reason to risk him. We are going to drop down to a positive mentality. And now Bailey to Scherz. Vermeeren is probably going to be the long-term guy in that spot. He's already a regular starter for Belgium. So the fact that he's already starting regularly for Belgium suggests he's probably not far from being a regular starter for us. Walker-Peters into Smith-Rowe, who just touches it on to João Pedro. If Fatty had still been on the pitch, that's his hat-trick there. João Pedro not quite got the same composure that Fatty has got, but it's another corner. It's Berg again. I think this time we're going far post because that's where Scherz is lurking. It's aimed at Scherz. He can't quite connect with it, but Bailey, of course, the aerial assassin last year, can't quite direct his header towards goal this time. Look how good we've been in this match. If we end up letting another goal slip and coming away from this without three points, it just comes down to missed chances because we've been very, very good. Um, Scherz, Plays it across to Dunk. Dunk needs to be a little bit careful here because this guy is pressing him quite well. Uh, but he plays it out to Valley, who's got all the space, all the time in the world. Slots it into João Pedro. João Pedro now back to Smith Rowe, who I don't know if he was tackled and it went to Berg under duress or if Smith Rowe was just on a wonderful dummy there. But either way, it falls to Berg, who's in space and he just hits it from the edge of the area. And that puts the game beyond doubt. Let's just watch what Smith Rowe does here. So the ball slid across from João Pedro. I think Smith Rowe is actually actually fouled and it's very fortuitous that it's gone through to Berg but we'll we'll call it a we'll call it a lovely dummy from Smith Rowe just to give him the credit 3-1 though and we are up to third in the league I told you this year Champions League we're coming for you wonderful stuff right folks I think the plan from here we are going to get some more games under our belts we're going to come back for the most interesting conference league game we've got in the league stage which is Bayer Leverkusen so we'll do that and if Bournemouth are still flying high we'll do Bournemouth as well Wayne Rooney's Bournemouth Bayer Leverkusen in November hopefully we'll still be up in the top four by then and getting ready to go on and have a uh jolly fine season if you enjoyed that please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching